Hi everyone, so let's now understand price volatility and price fluctuations in given markets. Now in this session we're going to look at a divergent cobweb. Divergent cobweb is of course where the actual price diverges away from our equilibrium price that we'd normally expect where supply equals demand there. Uh, okay, so that's not what happens here. and It means that we have a lot of price volatility as a direct result of this. So examples of where this could be applied could be, of course, agricultural production, uh, production of coffee, production of wheat, soya beans, any sort of crop-based produ uh, produce is very, very appropriate here. Okay, so cobweb diagrams help to explain price fluctuations in particular markets. So here we're really focusing on primary products, primary produced goods. Okay, um, so we've got our, our standard supply and demand diagram there, as you'd expect. Just notice that I've drawn a relatively elastic supply curve. There's a reason for me in, in doing so, and the reason is the fact that many different farmers could actually switch to production of this given good. Uh, so there's low barriers to entry, so it's worth just noting that. Because there's low barriers to entry, it means that uh, other producers can easily enter that marketplace and actually start producing that good. Okay, so we start off at, at what would be our equilibrium price, of course, uh, where supply equals demand. But let's perhaps consider a scenario now where actually we end up with a far better harvest for whatever uh, reason, uh, the actual level of production is far in advance of the actual equilibrium, okay? Um, now, when it comes to harvesting your crops in six, eight, nine months time, of course the supply then becomes perfectly inelastic when it comes to the domestic economy and what else can be produced in that certain circumstance, okay? In the longer term, of course, the supply curve is far more elastic because more farmers can actually enter that marketplace and produce more of that good. So here, if we just illustrate uh, our supply curve here, and let's just make a note here, or just change that pen, uh, that we've got a good harvest, okay? So here we've got a good harvest. Um, so we've got a level of production in advance of uh, the actual equilibrium. Now we can see that based on this supply curve, Supply would equal demand at this point here. Uh, I'll just label that, just point A there, so we can refer nicely to that. Okay, so we've got point A. Uh, now, based upon that level of price, then we can see that that corresponds to a price level of P1. Okay, now we can also see that at that level of price, if farmers then anticipate P1 is the given price for whatever crop is being produced in this circumstance, we can see that uh, that price level crosses our supply curve here. Okay, um, so it crosses there. So in the next period, we could expect farmers to actually produce a level of crop which is directly uh, in line with Q2 there, okay? Uh, so we can see that nice, nicely. Uh, and that, that makes uh, a good deal of sense, I hope, that. Um, so that is the supply curve in our second period, okay? So we've got supply one, uh, where we had a good harvest, okay? Supply two now, which was actually the anticipated level of production given price P1. Now the problem is, of course, we then have, uh, and let's just label point B there, okay? We then have point C, okay? Point C would now be our given price level. So we can see that the price has actually increased uh, substantially based on that information. Okay, now what's interesting about this is how this now disrupts the market once again. And we can see that actually at a price of P2 in the next period, farmers will actually want to produce a uh, supply curve three. Okay. Um, now, that would take us down to uh, supply equaling demand at point D. Uh, sorry, I'll label that one D and then point E here. So now we're actually here. So because all of the farmers wanted to produce uh, this quantity, 
which of course Q3, um, we can see at price P2, we had a large level of supply, but that corresponds with a much lower price level. So that means, of course, that the price comes down. So we've got a huge amount of volatility in this marketplace now, and we can see that the marketplace is going to diverge even further because in the next period, well, we can see that based on that, uh, at P3 here, only so many farmers are actually going to want to produce this given crop. So this is going to cause another disturbance. So overall, the actual impact that we can see as a direct consequence of where we started at point A is that the market diverges away from our equilibrium. Okay, and it would then keep doing so. So th thus, we see a cobwebbing effect taking place. Okay, uh, so we see that cobwebbing effect. Now, there are a couple of ways that we could uh, deal with such a scenario. Uh, so we could, of course, use a buffer stock scheme, a buffer stock scheme where uh, any surplus production is actually bought up by the government at the given price. Uh, and then is stored away and released when supply levels are actually quite low. Or alternatively, we could use minimum pricing system to actually guarantee prices in the marketplace. Uh, another option could be, of course, having a uh, price floor as well as a price ceiling. Uh, almost like having a sort of currency band based on an exchange rate system, okay, allowing the actual price to float a little bit between that given band but go no further below or further above. Okay, interesting stuff. Now, this applies, as we said, to areas where the supply curve is very elastic. So you've got to bear that in mind, okay? And that is, of course, elastic in the long run, but inelastic in the short run. Okay, guys, I hope that's been useful. Thanks a lot for watching. Do put some comments down there, down below, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Thanks, guys.